Hey everyone, it's Galactic Trades here. Sorry for not uploading yesterday, talking about you know my market review and everything. Just didn't have the time to do it. But today I, I just want to do the market review for yesterday. Kind of a quick overview of how I played it. So first of all, we had this bullish setup on NASDAQ, right? We had that push higher, but then that ended up resulting in this flat top. Came back down, made one last liquidity grab, and just ran for the rest of the day. So that was my overall bias, and that's just how it played out, which was really good. I was not expecting it to run all day like this, but it was just nice to see. And I'll show you how that relates to the other swings that I had, which ended up working really well with this nice push on the NASDAQ. Now, before we get into the video, make sure to like, subscribe, join the free Discord, link is down in the description, comment, tell me who learned anything, and let's get right into it. So for this first section, I wanted to talk about the swing trades that I made. This one went crazy, and I just wanted to talk about how I took it, you know, the, the setup overall, and then I wanted to get in, and then I want to get into my day trades, which I absolutely loved. They were all bangers. I called them out in the Discord. The team made money. So make sure to join the free Discord. Link is down in the description. And let's get into this swing trade. So we first had this level of demand below the area we were con consolidating above. And that gave me a point of interest to kind of watch as this played out. Now, the best part of this setup is this support level right here. This is what happened the day before I saw this swing, and I, this is what made me take it, right? So we had this, these, this kind of double bottom here. We had this break, and we had this use of it as support. Now, I talk about this a lot. I had a video on this on just my swing trading strategy. I'll link that in the description too, so make sure to go watch that. So we had this kind of use of support. Now, I want to go in the 60 minute just to illustrate that a little better. There it is. There it is, right? Look at that. We have this kind of strong area of support. We break down, we come back down and retest, and then I take this trade. I take this trade around here. We kind of actually I might have taken it a little bit late which was my biggest concern for this trade was my late entry, which was on me, not the trade itself. So I'm, I'm still happy with this trade overall. So I took it maybe around here. I was down for a portion of it, and then it gapped down too, which obviously made me concerned. Actually, it gapped up, I'm sorry, but it ran down right away. But that actually ended up making it a better trade because it actually came back down and retested this level again before it actually just entirely just flew the rest of the day, which made it an absolutely insane good trade, right? We, I'm sorry. we had this level, we broke down, we retested it, I took it long. We came back, retested it again in the morning, and we ripped. Look at that. 400, 500% right there. Now, I sold, <laughs> this was on me, I sold it early. I just wanted to get out of this trade. I did not realize it would run this much. I still sold it for a good 40 to 50%. This ended up running 400 to 500%. Now, this is just telling me to kind of trust my instincts a little bit more. I'm sorry, not trust my instincts, tr trust the setup. The setup was telling me that this was extremely bullish. I took it, I made, I made some money, but ultimately it, it moved a lot more. And I, I think I should, anyone should learn how to take profit better. And I think that's the biggest struggle for everyone as a trader is to be able to take profit more effectively. So what, in my ideal world, um, I'm sorry. So I take profit around here. This is where I start taking profit because I honestly don't want to see this because this is kind of a gappy stock, a little bit iffy in that sense. So. It will start making good move and then just start gapping down. And that absolutely wrecks the premium. So I did not want to hold this for a long time. I still caught this really good move from around 32 here in the open to 33.40. That's, that's amazing. 
I the best price target would to have these highs as the price target. That's what I should have had as my price target, but I didn't, which means I did not follow my plan as well as I should have, and I got kind of carried away with the intraday movement that I wasn't able to take profit where I should have. So we had this setup, these two lows, we took it out, we came back, we retested, we retested again at open, and this was absolutely a beautiful trade. Now here on Starbucks, we had another trade that this in time, unfortunately, I could not take it because I did not see this setup early enough, which is really unfortunate, right? So what did we have here? Again, low, 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 retest as resistance, retest as resistance, which actually I like that better as a setup because that confirms it more as an area of high liquidity. This is where people would add on to shorts, add on to shorts. We gap up above, rally below, retest, and guess what? Of course, I didn't perfectly test it because levels can be a little bit distorted. Well, not distorted. There's no perfect level. Some of the ranges are a little bit lower. Some are a little bit higher. It's hard to determine exactly where a level is. Sometimes it will be bought up above the level. Sometimes it will be bought up below. So just keep that in mind. If you see it started to get bought up near a level, like right here, that's probably where the idea is, okay? So again, we have these the support hold, we have it as resistance, we reclaim it, gap above, come back down. This is the trade I could have taken the day before yesterday as a swing. Unfortunately, I did not see it, but I just wanted to illustrate how it worked, right? We held, we continued higher, and the next day we gapped. It's, a, it's really good as a gapping strategy too. I checked the contracts on these. These also ran a good 300 to 400%. So, and actually this ended up making a possible swing again because look at this level. Now, I didn't love this. Like it could work, I guess. Um, so I'm not sure I would take this swing. But this was for sure a really good swing. And I really like the setup. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take it. So what would I do um, to not have missed these swings again? I think I should find a way to look through stocks effectively to find these setups. And I, I'm continuing to improve that skill. I'm finding more and more easily. So I'm really liking that. I'm getting there. And I think no one should say I'm at the perfect place where I can't get any better because no one is. So I would say I like this setup. I like the way the trade played out. And that's, I just like it as a good example to illustrate how well this works. This works extremely well. And now I wanted to move into actually how it works for day trading. So I'm just going to move on to that section and you're about to see a Baba example. It worked out and played out beautifully. Now I really like this trade because it also illustrates how this kind of setup works on different levels, right? So I saw this as a really strong support from yesterday, right? We had this level become an area where a lot of buyers were found. The price moved up, finally came back down, broke below, held here. Now, in hindsight, I should have bought around here, and this would have been a really nice trade. Now, I was on the one minute because I just wanted to see how this level would play out. I still like this trade that I took here. Let me turn on VWAP just to help you see what I was thinking. So I see this level be reclaimed again. And I'm just waiting for a kind of a tap to the level, right? I'm just waiting for it to get tapped by price so I can take it long. I see this candle touch price. Okay, it's like one cent. It's not even, yeah, it's one cent off. But I still thought that was really good confirmation. I take the trade along. I take it off at VWAP. Perfect trade for me. Uh, it was 30% right there. Um, I like the risk to reward because I'm not, if it starts going back down below this low, I'm taking it off. And then we had this high. So that's about a two to one. 
risk to reward. Two to one risk to reward. I like the trade overall. So we, what did we have? We had some significant lows here. Right? Significant lows. I would like to do that. Yeah, like that. And then we had price hold it, uh, break down, hold it. This is the key, right? So I could have taken this, right? Like, or this, but it didn't really hold price. Here it went up, touched it, touched it again, and then continued. And that's where I took this trade and I made 30%. So just look at that. Watch these chart patterns in your trading. Now, in a perfect world, I'm actually on the five minute. And I look here, and that's the trade, actually. And this would have made me way more. This would have made me 100% potentially, maybe 150. Now, the problem is you're never able to see these setups happen all the time in real time. I saw this one happen, and I was happy with the profit, profits. I did not look back to this. And then it pulled back, and this this was the this is the real trade here. I think this is the kind of the real move that was gonna happen. And as you can see, I mean, like the price action was confirming it, right? Like it didn't just touch here on the one minute; it held, and then it held again. I think that consolidation is important too. That's what I'm learning. You want to see price consolidate a little bit more on that level that is support breaks down, comes back. I want to see it consolidate a little bit. And that was the best possible trade I could have taken. Would have taken some at VWAP, ended up holding in this area. It didn't start breaking down again. Um, taking off, like, honestly, I just take off some every spike. I just take off more here, take off more here. Once I see price break down back below this level, I'm out. That would be the ideal world. But this is good to learn from, right? You kind of learn how these setups play out better. And on some stocks, they move better, like Alibaba. This this stock moves a lot more in kind of smaller intervals. So it will have like just a big spike retracement, big spike retracement, big spike, and then we'll retrace. And so that's my trade recap on Baba. Let's move on to Neo. Here's what I saw on Neo, guys. Same setup, right? I also like Neo for that similar nature of spike, consolidate, spike, consolidate, spike, consolidate kind of setup, right? And it also has some very interesting trading opportunities to take at open, right? So what we saw here, or what I saw here, is if we could move on to a five minute, sorry. Okay, actually I think a three minute would best illustrate this. Yes, a three minute. So what I saw here was a level, uh, in a key level where price bounced off multiple times, be taken out, and rapidly bought up into open. And I'm like, wow, this is really interesting, right? We have this level, we have this buy up, and then it, it comes back down here. Now for Neo, I realized that my pr profit targets might be a little bit different because of just the nature of its somewhat interesting movement. So I'm not taking profits at resistance levels. I'm just taking profits at kind of logical areas of kind of reversal and just where I see price start to reverse, right? So I took calls here and price just started reversing, right? I, I might have taken it around right here, so I might have been in the red for a literally... The only thing that kept me in the red was spreads until around right here. I was in the green and it ran up to here. And at this point, I took it all off here. Around right here is when I took it off. I could have held it for one more cent in the best, or actually three more. In the best world, I could have held it for three more cents. But I was like, this is my first trade of the day. So I'm just like, you know, let me just take the easy profit. And I really like this trade. I like the setup. I like the way it moved. Completely happy with that. Same setup. Neo is a really interesting stock to watch for those kind of gap downs and buy ups and retests. So Baba is the one for just interesting volatility off of certain areas, such as the ones that are broken down and retested. 
I like Neo at open. Neo has some really interesting volatility at open. Same setup here, actually. I had a very, if actually, I want to go to an hourly here. Very similar setup here. If I go here, just get rid of that. At open, we take out this level. If you go on the one minute, we ended up holding it. We ended up opening right here, coming back down, touching it, and launching off for the rest of the day. Right here, it was a similar setup, but it was just on a smaller time frame. Came here, um, rallied, retested, and then that was our move. So it usually has, it has money to be made at open. So definitely watch for that. Uh, and now I want to move on to my final trade that I'm really happy with, which was Charles Schwab. Let's move on to that. Now for my last day trade review, I ended up taking Charles Schwab. What did I see here? I saw this low of day. I saw it um, go below, go above it, retest right here, and I took it right here. I took it... Hmm. Yeah, I took it around right here. Now, I actually like the way I executed on this trade. Obviously, I could have held for more, but you can't know that in hindsight. You can only know that in hindsight. You can't know that in the middle of the day when it's moving and you have real money on the line. So I take it here. It's consolidating. I don't love it. It's just kind of iffy. I wanted more of movement. Finally, we have a little NASDAQ push, and it absolutely rips. I, I did not like it here, how we kind of licked here on this level. I was a little bit concerned. We rip, and I get out here. Um, the reason I got out here actually made sense to me, and I'm happy with that take profit. I could have just waited for the dip and gotten, uh, and just kind of held. But this was a really heavy selling zone, and there was some selling imbalances along here. So I wanted to take profit on that, and I didn't want to be stuck in a trade. I can just lose all of my profit that way. 40% right here. 40%. I'm super happy with it. I felt like it had a somewhat kind of oversold sell-off kind of thing so it would sell off but it became extremely oversold to the market relative to the market and i felt like that was a little bit unjustified as a sell-off and then i guess the market thought that too and we held this level this is one of the best reversal patterns too that you can take right where else would you take this trade really like you wouldn't you can't really nail the bottom here there's nothing to take it based on so we have this break we have this reclaim and support now, I obviously wish I could have seen it right here. This would have been really nice. I could have capitalized on these, like, let's say, like, 10 actual, literally 10 cents right there. I could have netted an extra 10% that way. Unfortunately, I didn't, but I still took it on the plan. I'm happy with the setup. It worked out very well, and honestly... On this trade, I thought I did a pretty good job. I captured a good profit target. It kept rallying. This is 200% probably. Um, I didn't catch that. The trade I did alert in the Discord, though, I alerted this trade in the Discord, was, watch this closely, right? We had this low. Um, if I go, this is hard to illustrate on this time frame. We had this low. Um we had this support area here. It reacted as support here. It wasn't the low that I used for this, but it was a low. And then, if we go on the five minute, it also acted as support here. And then resistance. And then I was like, okay, this is a valid level. <clears throat> we did react off it once, right? We did make a kind of push off of it once. And once I saw it come back with a higher high, I was like, this is a pretty good trade. I took the trade, we swung it to like, we literally took it from the bottom at 52 to 52.24. A good trade overall. Like, 
the profit was about um, 30% on this. The spreads became a little iffy at the end, possibly three, four cent spreads, but it was still 30% trade. And then it ended up making a flat top at this level and just selling off. And we were already out here. So that was a good trade overall. I like the trades I made on this stock, and I really like how this setup is playing overall. Keep watching for this setup. Learn to find it on other tickers too. Watch how other tickers react to the setup intraday and as a swing trade. And once you start identifying those patterns and figuring out how it works for you, this is gold right here. Like it's working so well for me. And I hope that you find value in this and that it can work well for you. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below if you liked it, and see you in the next one.